living word I eat. I see what God has done, but I know all about the I eat. But look what the Lord has done. Praise the Lord. You know, I'm just glad to be here tonight. Uh, go ahead and have a seat. Uh, and we're going to jump in this word tonight. It's a blessing just to be here to be with the Living Word family. It's been about six years. I'm, I'm getting a little emotional because your pastor um, has always been a friend. He's been a mentor. Walked me through some tough stuff. Anybody been through some tough stuff in here? And he's been consistent. Anybody know about being consistent? This man is about restoring. He's about renewing. He's about doing the will of God. He's not a self-promoting man, but he's a kingdom-promoting man, amen? And so when my brother Art and I connected, uh, and we've been in contact throughout the years, and he hooked me and Pastor Reggie up, and Pastor Sonia greeted me and my wife like we never left. Oh, and just open their arms up to us. God bless you, Pastor Sonia. So I'm just grateful to be with the Living Word family tonight. I'm about to hit this word hard. And, and I'm speaking to a church that will understand this. Uh, the Lord knows what he's doing. In Psalms 133, I'm going to keep it simple. But you'll get it. In Psalms 133, the scripture says, Behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head. That oil you've been talking about there, Pastor Reggie. It's like the precious oil on the head running down on the beard, on the beard of Aaron. Running down on the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon which falls on the mountains of Zion. For the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. I want to speak to you tonight about the power of the unified church. The power of the unified church. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you for the opportunity to be used as your vessel, O oh God to pour out tonight for your people. And Lord God, I ask you to just let your spirit flow tonight. Let it flow through me. Let your word flow to your people, oh God. Let your people leave, leave here tonight filled up and equipped and encouraged, oh God, to continue the work that you have set before them. And Father, to even see it grow in a greater way. I thank you for Pastor Reggie and Pastor Sonia and the body of believers here at Living Word in an empire, Father. And Lord, we're just praying, Lord, that you will move powerfully through your word tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. If we look about our country, one of the things that we see happening more and more is division. Division on every level. Division in the politics, division in, in the races, division uh, all the way down to our cities. Division in our homes. We see division in the marriages, division in families. Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. Division in families, children rebelling against their parents. And then when Paul is writing Timothy, he tells us that this time will come in the last days. Amen. But God has called his church. He's called his church to show a difference in this world that we live in today. He's called us to be different than this world that we live in today. Too many of us are trying to fit in and look like everybody else, but God didn't call you to look like everybody else. He called you out 
like a light that sitteth on the side of a hill and gives light to the whole city. Amen? That's what he did. He called you out. Someone said he called me out. The power to impact change in our society is going to come from a unified church. Stop looking for it from the government. Stop looking for it from all these secular philosophers who have their get-rich-quick schemes and we can make life better for you schemes. It's going to come through you and I. It's the church that will make a difference. It's the church that will turn this thing around. Amen? Too many in the church are waiting for the government to do something for them. You work under another government. You work under the kingdom government. And the Lord our God, his name is Yahweh. He reigns above all. He takes care of his own. Amen, somebody. So, so, so we're ushering in another government. But how are we going to do this? How are we going to do this? It starts with us. It starts with you and I individually. Look at your neighbor and say, it starts with you. Tell them you're responsible. You're responsible. Because we say that we are Christians. Anybody in here an unbeliever? Believe me, I got an altar call for you later on. Um, we, hey, it's okay. If you're here, we're going to get you in the kingdom tonight. Amen. We're going to get you in the kingdom tonight. But, 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 but listen, listen, listen. It's our responsibility. If we say that we are Christians, we should be united with the Lord Jesus Christ, right? We should be under our king's government, right? So there should be some things that he is doing in our lives. He should be changing us individually. And, and that change that's taking place in us individually should be taking place in our homes as well. You see, we cannot be saved here. We cannot act holy here and go home after the fool. Your children will tell on you. Help me, somebody. Your children will tell everybody. That's not how they act at home. But, but when, when we're really submitted to the Lord Jesus Christ and when we're really, really following him with all of our heart, soul, and mind, we take that home, and I'm telling you, just one saved spouse can save an entire marriage. Someone said a sanctified wife can sanctify the husband. I'm going to flip that and say that a sanctified husband can sanctify a wife as well. Come on now. It's us that bring change. We bring the change. You're not responsible for anyone else other than you. Now, as a parent, you have a responsibility to train up in the way they should go. And the Bible says that when they get old, they will not depart from it. Amen? Now, let me speak to some parents real quick. This ain't even in the message, but let me just speak to some parents. Listen, don't worry about it when they start acting a fool. Don't worry about it when they go crazy. If you put the word in them and you train them up in the way that they should go, the Bible says when they get older, they will not depart from it. They need a reference point to get back to. You gotta give them something. Oh, help me this evening, Lord. We gotta give them something. Say, listen, listen. It don't start with the church. It should start at home. When they get here, it should just be confirming of everything you've been teaching in your household. But if you ain't teaching in your household, don't blame the church when your child goes crazy. Train them up. Train them up in the way that they should go. And see that, that, that oneness with the Lord, that oneness with the Lord, that unity that we have with the Lord begins to impact our marriage and restore. Restore. Pastor Edgy and I were just talking about restoration in the back there. And, and when the Lord restores a marriage, he doesn't make it better. He makes it better, much better than before. Y'all hear me now. He's not just trying to get you back together. Because that was the problem in the first place. You need to be better than you were before. So somebody needs to be praying, Lord, restore. Don't just get us back together, Lord, but restore. Make it better than before. When, when that unity hits the marriage, it begins to spread into the family. and begins to impact the lives of our children. And so all of a sudden, you know, because it's powerful, it's powerful when you have a husband and a wife that are on the same page. 
It's powerful when you have a husband and wife who see the same thing, who are serving the same Lord and, and believe the same way. It's powerful, it's powerful. For those of you that are single, don't get with nobody that don't have no vision. Don't get with nobody that ain't serving the Lord wholeheartedly. Oh, they just came in and they look good and they look fine and everything. Wait, 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 wait. You let the Lord do that. Stop, stop trying to control that. Let the Lord do that, amen? But when a husband and wife together are on the same page, it's so powerful. They have an impact in their home. They have an impact on their children. And all of a sudden, you've got a family that is unified. We were out to dinner with, with Pastor Edge and Pastor Sonia, and, and they were talking about their daughter, and she was just a baby when we, you know, well, she was six, but she was still a baby to us. And, and now she's doing worship for children's ministry and things. She's being trained up in the way that she should go. Amen? The, the, the spirit that is in them is impacting their home. We want to impact our home. Now, here's what's happening when, when we are united in our marriage and we're united in our families when we go to the soccer field, when we go to the basketball gym, when we go to the football uh, 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 field for our children and they're playing sports or whatever, other families are seeing you. They're watching you and they're wondering how do you have such a good family and you get to tell them about Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. Because I wouldn't even have a family right now if it wasn't for Jesus. I've been married to this woman for 28 years and I thank Jesus because when I got to Jesus, she was getting ready to divorce me, but when I got to Jesus, he restored my marriage, made it better than what it was before, and I'm telling you, 26 years later, we're still going strong. Hallelujah. Give God some praise this evening. We are the ones that our city needs to see. When I pulled in, I was like, I told my wife, like, oh my God. And the word that came to my heart was, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. I looked at all of these apartments and, and homes and things, and I'm like, oh, and they're sitting right in the middle of it. You're sitting right in the middle of a harvest. And a unified church can go in and get the harvest. A church where they see Jesus moving in the marriages and Jesus moving in the families and Jesus moving in the singles and moving in individuals, they can go in and get the harvest because the harvest is tired of seeing those who just go to church and don't go with Jesus. They want to see some living epistles. They want to see some that can say, he saved me, and I owe my life to him, and I'm living for him every day. They want to see that. They want to see that. Let me keep going because my time, i got to move here. i got to move here. David declares the blessing of unity. He says, behold. Someone say, behold. That word behold means look. Give your attention to this. He said it is good. Somebody say good. Oh, man, real, real good. He says it is good. It, it, that means that it's agreeable to the senses. It's agreeable to the higher nature, to your spirit, man. It is good, good. Anybody ever been on a spiritual high where you were just like, oh, Lord, that's good? And you just wanted to bask in his presence? That's what unity is amongst the brethren. He, David says, it, 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 and it's like, it's good and, and, and it's pleasant. He said it's pleasant, it's delightful, it's sweet, it's lovely. That, that word pleasant is related to the word delicacy. Y'all know what I'm talking about when I say delicacy? I'm going to take you on a trip and maybe Pastor Edgy had some while he was down in Mexico, so I'm going to hit this up. My, my Theo Pancho, well, my wife's Theo Pancho, they don't trip, that's my Theo, all right? When he comes back from his fishing trips in Baja, he usually brings back some stingray. Anybody has stingray before? Mateo Pancho hooks it up so tight, and he makes this habanero salsa, and he makes tacos from the stingray. Now, we're not supposed to have stingray. You're not supposed to. You're supposed to throw them back. They don't throw them back. They bring them home. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And it's a delicacy and it tastes so good. He hooks it up so sweet. But 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 David is saying that is what that is what unity is like amongst the brethren. It's having something special. 
It's like having something that, that, that you just can't have anywhere else, you know. You just can't go to McDonald's and get this. You just can't go down the street to whatever taco shop and get this. This is special. Someone say this is special. See, living where I eat, you got something special here. And God is doing something powerful here. And I want you to know that God is about to grow this thing like you, man, my God. You haven't even seen what God, the Bible says that I have not seen nor even heard what the Lord has in store. What he's got in store, what he's, gosh, I'm getting ahead of myself. He's got something in store for you. He's got something great in store for you. How do we experience this unity? Well, look, David says, when, when, brothers and sisters, we're not leaving you out, sisters, when, at that time, when is a time word, when, at the time that brothers and sisters dwell together, dwell together. Now, listen to me. That word dwell is the same word as abide. Abide and remain. Now, I'll take you to John 15. Just go there in your head. John 15, Jesus tells us to abide in him. He says when we abide in him, when we remain in him, when we keep his word in us, that we will bear much fruit. Ooh. So when the brothers and sisters are at the same time dwelling together, submitted to the word of the Lord, there's a fruitfulness that's about to be produced in you. Like you have not seen. You thought you were fruitful. And I'm looking at you and you're fruitful. But I'm telling you, Lord, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. You have not seen what God wants to do. You have not seen it. Let me, let me keep going. Now, listen. Because sometimes we think this. We think this. We think that unity is uniformity. That we all look the same. We all got to say the same thing. We all got to look the same way. Let me tell you something. You can be on the same team and not think the same thing. Check this out. Any Patriots fans in here? Praise the Lord. We're going to pray for you, brother. We're going to have altar call right now. I ain't going to get it started because I know there's some Cowboy fans up in here. I know there's some Packer fans up in here. Some Raider fans in here. I know y'all up in here. Amen. But, but, but Randy Moss is interviewing Tom Brady. And he asked Tom Brady a question. He said to him, he asked him, he said, what was it that, that made some receivers great and some didn't work out with you? And he said, it's when they were looking at the same thing and were seeing two different things. He said, they're seeing things one way and I'm seeing things another way. Oh, I'm gonna finish. But, but, he said to Randy Moss, but you and I saw things the same way. I didn't have to tell you what route to run. I didn't have to tell you where to go. I didn't have to tell you what to do. I just threw the ball and you would be there. You see, you see, we, we may look at things and we think, well, Pastor, I don't know if the Lord wants to do it that way. Stop and pray. Get your mind right. Because God's called him and her to pastor. And there's been a vision casted for this ministry, for this work that God is doing here in the IV. And so you need to see what he sees. And so you need to be where he's throwing the ball to. You need to anticipate what pastor's going to do next and have it already ready for him so it'll just be a touchdown when it's all over with. Amen? That's, that's where we want to be as a unified church and when we are all in one mind and one accord and, 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 and when we start, start thinking about what the pastor is thinking about and pastor just speaks something and somebody's already running to get it done and he, he speaks vision about somebody and somebody starts going and, and putting it together. Now, now, now we're in a place where the advancement of the kingdom of God through living word, i.e., hits even harder. Oh my God. Let me keep going. Our differences complement each other. Some of you have skills that I don't have. 
Some of you can do things that I can't do. God did not make us the same. He said we are beautifully and wonderfully or uniquely made. But just like a puzzle, all of our uniqueness fits together when we come together in unity and it makes a beautiful picture for the world to see. I want to keep going because I'll get to that in a minute. As our place in Christ, as we place ourselves in Christ by trusting in him for our deliverance and our salvation, the Bible says this in Galatians 3 and 28. He says, there is neither Jew nor Greek, huh, no slave, no free, no male, no female, but all are one in Christ Jesus. Someone say, we are one in Christ Jesus. That was weak. Come on, say, we are one. In Christ Jesus. That's what I like, man. I like that over there. That's what I'm talking about. Bring that base. We are one in Christ Jesus. And as a body of believers, there's nothing that we can't do when we are one. And I want to talk to you about that a little bit here because this is where, where, where David says in verse 2, he says that it is like the fine oil on the head. Uh-oh. The fine oil on the head running down on the beard. Here we go. Here we go, that oil, that oil. In, in, in the Middle Eastern culture, when someone visited your home, they would have their feet washed. The one who was visiting would get their feet washed and they would get fine oil to place on their face. And it would cause their skin to radiate. It's this beauty about them, they look good, like some good lotion, you know what I'm talking about? And, and not only did it make them look good, it had the fragrances of the frankincense and the myrrh that the pastor been teaching you about up in the oil. And so you not only look good, but you smell good. Y'all don't hear me. So there was a sweet aroma in the room when you were there. And so, so when the anointing, when the, when, when, the, when the church is united, there is an anointing on us just like the oil. It not only makes us look good, it makes us smell good. That means that our personality is the right personality. The spirit about us is the right spirit about us. We got a good spirit, not that old spirit that we used to have, right? right. How many of y'all like folks walking up in your house with a funky attitude? You want to just tell them you can go now, right? But let's just start this prayer meeting right now. Because you need some prayer. Or I'm going to need some myself, right? But the oil, the oil changed the way they look, changed the way they smell. Now, for the priest, this was even different. It was even more valuable. He says, he says in the scripture, running down Aaron's beard onto his robe. The, the priest, when Aaron is anointed high priest, the Lord tells, tells Moses to set him aside in Exodus 30 and 30. And he says, set Aaron and his sons aside for the work for which I've called them to. And he says, you're going to anoint them with the oil. You're going to consecrate them with the oil. And, and that oil was a special oil made by the perfumers. Your pastor's already broken it down. I don't need to go into all of that. But, but that oil was what was poured over their head. And it ran down Aaron's beard, and the Bible says it ran down onto his robe. It, it, it was representing the anointing of the Holy Spirit in his life, consecrating him and his sons, setting him and his sons apart for the work of the Lord. Listen, 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 church. The oil is flowing over the church now. You've been set aside for the work of the Lord. You can't you can allow yourself to be used for what the world used to use you for. You gotta let yourself be used for what the Lord has for you. Don't, don't, don't let yourself to do what the world wants to do with you, but get yourself wholeheartedly to what the Lord would do in you and through you. Amen? Hallelujah. He says it's like the dew, the light rain, the drizzle that would happen at night. So Y'all get that up here in the IE? We don't get that in the desert. We get due maybe two months out of the year, January, February, and it's over. It's over, because in March it's heating up and it's like, forget it. Ain't nothing staying till the morning. But that drizzle, 
will land on Mount Harmon. Mount Harmon is a mountain that sat north of the Sea of Galilee, and, and it would get the snow caps. And when the snow would melt, the rivers would run off of the mountain down into the Sea of Galilee, and it was what fed the Sea of Galilee and kept it filled with fresh water, fish, amen? So, so that was important to the life of the people. It's important to the life of the people. He says that dew, he says the dew of Hermon falling on the mountains of Zion. Falling on the mountains of Zion. Now wait a minute, he switched regions. Because Zion is in Jerusalem, okay? They are miles away from each other. But the same way the dew fell on Mount Hermon, the spiritual dew was on Mount Zion. The blessing of God, the spirit of God, it was the mount that he ruled from. He ruled there from, from, from Jerusalem in the temple with the people of, of, of Jerusalem. He ruled the nation of Israel from there. And so there was a powerful anointing on the Mount of Zion, on Jerusalem. Amen? And, and so we are set aside when we are unified. It's the same way that oil flows from us, down us, that dew is all over us, bringing life. The dew brought life to the people, and it represents abundance and prosperity. Now, I'm not a prosperity gospel preacher, but in this I do believe in, because we're going through it right now. See, when you give unto the Lord, and you give your life unto the Lord, right now my wife is not working at all. Doctor won't let her go back. She's been fighting, trying to get back for months now. It's been a minute, out of disability and all of that. But check this out. The Lord has been allowing me to continue to work, and he's been blessing me in my work so he can take care of all the bills and everything without her working. And it's like, okay, Lord, we dipped. We dipped into the minus a couple times over the last three months. And, and she's like, baby, do you want to cut back on that? I'm, I'm telling you, baby, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> She said, you know, do we need to cut back because you know I'm working and you know we give at this level? Do we want to cut back? I'm like, no, baby, we ain't cut back. Because I believe the Lord is going to bring us right back to where we were when we were working. And, 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 and just a few weeks later, <laughs> just a few weeks later, my review came. And my boss says, my boss says, we're going to give you the full 3%. Now, some of y'all said 3%. That ain't a lot, Pastor. I, I'm telling you it ain't a lot. But 3%, I'll take it. I'll take it. It was going to make up. But she said, we're going to add another 4 on top of that. 7%. 7. God's perfect number. So God was born. And, 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 and the increase covers the bills completely. In the same time, my wife has been very frugal. She been like, you know, shopping like, <laughs> it ain't on sale, I ain't getting it. <laughs> you gotta use some wisdom in this thing, y'all. You know? Oh man, let me finish this up. How do we maintain this unity, this togetherness? In John 7, 37 through 39, Jesus is at the feast and he stands up. He says, if anyone is thirsty, let them come unto me. If you're thirsty, let them come unto me, and watch this, out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. Just like Mount Hermon had rivers coming down in, Jesus, the Bible says that Jesus was talking about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. You know, we know him as the Holy Ghost. We ain't scared of that word. <laughs> out of his belly would flow rivers of living water. The Holy Spirit. When we come to Jesus, if you're thirsty tonight, come to Jesus. If you need something tonight, come to Jesus. And, and the Bible says that out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Your life will be changed. You will become a life-giving individual because Jesus is in you, stirring up new life, pouring out new life in your life. Amen. And then, and then he said in Luke 24, 49, he told the people, he said, he told his disciples, he said, I want you to go to Jerusalem and I don't want you to leave until you are endued or filled up with power. Someone say power. power. See, because to live unified, you need some power. Help us, Holy Ghost. Y'all know we can get an attitude. Y'all know we can carry grudges. 
And if you don't have the Holy Ghost to correct you, if you don't have the Holy Ghost to get you out of that mess, you will sit there in a funk and bring that mess right on up into the church. You see, the unity that you have in your marriage, the unity that you have in your family, is the unity that you bring into the church body and bless the body. But if you got a funkiness in your marriage, a division in your marriage, a division in your family, you bring it up in the church and there's a funkiness up in the church. I know what I'm talking about. So we need the Holy Ghost to help us forgive, to help us let go, to help us adjust our attitudes and get ourselves right with the Lord and to love our brothers as ourselves. Amen? We need the Holy Ghost. And Jesus knew that his, his boys were going to need the Holy Ghost because they were the ones that were fighting about who going to be the greatest in carrying on. They don't want to get mad at Peter because, you know, Peter, you know, he's talking about he's he the leader. Like, they're like, who are you? What? John, James and John are making deals, trying to get the throne on the left side and the right side. They're like, what? Oh, no, 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 we're not having that. But see, that happens in the church. So Jesus said, y'all gonna need the Holy Ghost. You're gonna need the Holy Ghost. And so he tells them, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. You see, without the Holy Spirit, we can't witness. I don't care how many scriptures you go and memorize, without the Holy Spirit, you cannot be affected in evangelism. And if we're gonna win this neighborhood, if we're gonna win this neighborhood, living word I.E., we're gonna need the Holy Ghost to go up in some homes before us. We're gonna need him to go down some streets before us so that when they get to us, they're ready to receive us, amen? And, and they already knew that we were coming because he's the one that draws us to the Father, amen? And, and he told them, he said, I want you to wait. I want you to, we know how Acts 2, 1 and 4 goes. Acts 2, 1 and 4, they were all gathered in one room and the Bible says that they were with one accord. Now the, the, the praise and worship team will understand that accord. Accord is another word for harmony. Harmony is another word for unity. Oneness, when we're all singing the right note, and we're all playing the right note. Musicians know this, there's a ring in the building for them all being on the same page. And, and just like in here, there's, there's a sweetness in this room, there's a sweetness in this body of believers that, that you're all on the same page, you're all behind your pastor, amen. And, and, and it's there, it's there where the Holy Spirit can be poured out, where there is unity, the Holy Spirit can be poured out. Now don't forget this about the Holy Spirit because we treat him like he's a third world citizen sometimes, but the Holy Spirit is God, the Holy Spirit. He has the power to change, he has the power to deliver. He's the one that raised Jesus up from the dead, so he's the one that has resurrection power. And if we want to see a neighborhood change, if we want to see people's lives change, resurrection power that comes from the Holy Spirit moving in us and reaching out to the lost. If we want to see our families change, it's going to take the Holy Spirit. I know we got family members that be like, oh Lord, I ain't ready. I'm not ready, Lord. But, 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 but the Holy Spirit will make you ready. He will make you ready. He'll make you love when they done did you wrong. Y'all got some family members that did you wrong, right? The Holy Spirit can fix all of that. Amen. Here, here, and this I love. I'm going to end with this. In Acts 2, 46 through 47. They were all, in Acts 2, we hear that they all were filled with the Holy Spirit, not just the 11, but the 120. See, sometimes we think the Holy Spirit is just for the pastors. Hello. When the Holy Spirit is for everybody. The 120 were filled with the Holy Spirit, and the Bible said they spoke with other tongues or other languages that they did not know, and the others heard them as if they were giving praises to God in their own languages. Amen? But this part, and I want to end here. In Acts 2, 46 through 47, the scripture says every day they devoted themselves, every day, that's what the Holy Ghost will do to you. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple complex. They went to church every day. We cry about a couple hours on Sunday. 
Thursday night, man. He said, gosh, it's 9 o'clock. We get out to No, 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 no. They, they, they were every day. Check this out. Check this out. The scripture goes even further. He says, and broke bread from house to house. What? We're going to leave the church and then we're going to go hang out and fellowship at the house too? And we're going to break bread at the house too? When real unity hits, the fellowship begins to grow in such a way that you love one another so much that you want to go home and spend time with your brothers and sisters. And, and you're looking to pass it on telling you we're doing evangelism on Saturday. No, you're already up and down the street of your community doing it yourself because the Holy Spirit, a team of you, have got together and say, come on, you need Jesus. Let me show you how to get a, a hold of Jesus. God said, don't even have to initiate it. Because there's unity in the body. He says, they ate their food with joyful and humble attitude. A joyful and humble attitude. God knows we need that in the church. Praising God and having favor with all the people. They had favor with all the people. They didn't have favor with some people. They had favor with all the people. And there were people from around the world there. They had favor with them all. And every day the Lord, every day the Lord, every day the Lord. So you thought it was your evangelism skills. But the Bible said every day the Lord. The Lord added to them that to those who were being saved. He added to them who were being saved. The Lord is going to do the work. The Lord's going to do the work. Look, living word, I mean, stay in unity. Stay behind your pastors. Stay together as a team. Capture the vision. Praise God because your pastor has deep vision. He has deep vision and God is using him in some powerful ways. He wants to reach cities upon cities. And it's going to come from right here within this body. Amen? So listen, listen, stay together. And don't worry about how it's going to happen. The Lord will add to the church on a daily. Not just Sunday, not just Thursday. They're going to be walking up in praise and worship for us. I'm talking about, I need Jesus. Praise and worship team going to stop and be like, we're going to give you Jesus in the middle of our song right here. Come on now. That's what the Lord wants to do through a unified church. It went so far in Acts that the Bible says about Paul and his group when they went to Ephesus, they said that these men have turned this city upside down. Ooh, a unified church, a unified team can flip a city upside down. Wouldn't it be wonderful to see the 215 jammed in both ways because everybody's trying to get the living word out here. oneness with the body. Amen? How do we do it? We've got to be one with Jesus first. First and foremost. He has to be Lord of our lives. You say, you mean Savior, Pastor? No, he needs to be Lord of our lives. He needs to be the governor of our lives. He needs to run our lives. So if you're here tonight and Jesus is not the Lord of your life, Listen, it was him that came and showed us how to live a life that was submitted to the Father. It was him that came and died upon the cross for all of our sins, past, present, and the ones you're going to make tomorrow. It was him that did that. It was him that was raised up on the third day so that you could have a new life. A new life. That's resurrection life. That was Jesus that did that. And the Bible tells us that he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. Praying for us even now. If you are here and you don't know this wonderful Lord and Savior, I want to encourage you to stand and come. Come. Because there's no greater decision that you can make than giving your life to Jesus. Anyone. The second most important thing, the 
that we need to do to stay unified as a church is be filled with the Spirit of God. We need to be filled with the Spirit of the Lord. If you're here tonight and you have not been filled with the Holy Spirit, I want you to come. I want you to come. Pastor, pastors, they're ready to minister to you. They're ready to usher you in to the infilling of the Holy Spirit. You can get it in worship. Man, I heard so many of you worshiping in tongues up in here tonight. Whew. Now what you do with that power is you take it out and you impact the city. We don't just get filled up for ourselves to say, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. We go so that we can speak boldly the gospel of Jesus Christ. We get filled up so that the gifts of the Holy Spirit can move through us and minister to those in need. We get filled up with the Holy Spirit so that his fruit will show up. That love, that joy, that peace, that kindness, that gentleness, that self-control that you need to show up in the workplace. How many of you needed to show up in the workplace? Come on. Because that is your mission field. And the Lord is sending you. You need it tonight? Come. Come. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you just need prayer, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your name. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. 